the actor that plays Batman sort of has a weird accent. I know someone's going to be like, he's British. But it's like, you know, he could have at least worked hard on the American accent. I mean, Batman doesn't sound like a snooty businessman from... (laughs) from whatever place. You know, he just... Yeah... (laughs) I mean, listen to his accent. Let me find a. Let me find a video and I'll play it. He just has a weird accent. It just, it's. I don't know what it is. It's just. You listen to his accent. It's like. Oh, for God's sakes, Taylor Swift. No one cares about you anymore. Wait, they added Bumblebee on there? On Titans? Wow, I didn't even know that. Why didn't anybody tell me that? Bumblebee's on there. Lola, will you stop attacking the wires? Ah, <laughs> oh, here it is. Let's play it. I don't know if you can hear it. It kind of has a low accent. Sorry, low voice. So. I don't know what to think. <laughs> and Lola hit the space bar, turning off the video. Thank you. <laughs> the old Titan friends are back. <laughs> so it's new. He has a very weird accent. I mean, he was awesome in Game of Thrones, but... And... I don't know if it's just me, but... He... I don't want to sound rude or disrespectful, but he looks old. I know he's supposed to be like this older Batman, but I don't want a Grandpa Batman. You know? I mean, if you're going to get an older actor to play Batman, get Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I know someone's going to be like, he played Thomas Wayne, but it's like, he's a TV actor too, but you know, you could have gotten him to play Batman. And he just, he doesn't have the Bruce Wayne physique. You know, Batman's supposed to be big and bulked up and stuff. I'm glad you agree. (laughs) But it's just like, I don't know what it is. He just doesn't look, you know, he looks like if a continuation of George Clooney's Batman. He looks calm, relaxed, cool. I guess it's because, you know... I guess it's because, you know, Dick Grayson's older and he's just like, hey, you know, this kid's going to take over for me. (laughs) But it's just... I don't know what it is. It's just... He's not attractive. (laughs) He's old. <laughs> How old is the dude, anyway? I know somehow I'm getting on a discussion of Titans, but it involves Batman. Not the Tennessee Titans. I'm excited for the XFL, so... For those who like football. 
I'm happy for the XFL by Vincent Kennedy McMahon, damn it. <laughs> That's my Vince McMahon impression, so. Ian Glenn. He's 50, he's 58? Wow. I thought he was like 60. Well, he's close to being 60, but... That's not... That's not that. There's a lot of hot old actors. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but he's not Batman. Well, I... What I've heard about Ian Glenn playing Batman is that there's going to be stunt doubles taken over for when he does like combat action scenes and that doesn't involve Lola trying to attack my wires on the microphone. He stopped. <laughs> um, I guess they're... I guess he can't do the action scenes, so I guess they're having the stunt doubles do the action scenes and stuff. And I guess they're going to have him do like the close-ups or the standings as him in, his, in the bat suit. Not him doing the stunt scenes. Um, <laughs> laughing emoji faces. And I like how they have Mercy Graves, Lex Luthor's ruthless, cunning right-hand bodyguard in the show. Because they're going to have Superboy, Connor Kent. So. There's one thing that bugs me. That just bugs me. Um, I think you should play Batman, smirky face. I'm Batman. So, <laughs> I should play Batman. One thing that kind of disturbed me when I first with the Titans was Afika Goldsman writing Titans. I know he wrote, co-wrote it with Jeff Johns and Greg Berlanti, but it just worries me that he wrote it. Because for those who don't know, he wrote... saving my drink because Lola likes drinking out of tea so I found that out um Apika Goldsman wrote well Batman Forever wasn't bad and ow and my cat's attacking my microphone cords uh he wrote Batman Forever which wasn't bad it was a good movie by the way I will defend that film and they also wrote Batman and Robin Lost in Space, the not-so-good one. I mean, seriously, how do you fuck up Lost in Space? <laughs> That's a question I like to know. Uh, Practical Magic, which I actually enjoyed that movie, by the way. I enjoy Practical Magic. That was a good movie, so... You give him a pass on that one. Uh, a Beautiful Mind, never seen it. I, Robot, seen it once. Children of Men. That is a good movie, by the way. Uh, Clive Owen. No, I'm sorry. That wasn't Clive Owen. Uh, yeah, Clive Owen wasn't... No, he didn't write Children's Men. Sorry, that's Cinderella Man. Sorry. <laughs> Cinderella Man. Da Vinci Code. Wait, he wrote that? He wrote... If it, okay, Da Vinci Code. Give him a pass. Uh, I Am Legend. I don't know. It was... The ending sucked. The del it's bad that the ending, the deleted ending was better than the ending that played in theaters. So, Angels and Demons, um, I didn't like it. Uh, he did Divergent, Insurgent. <laughs> Divergent, Insurgent. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's see, The Fifth Wave. Wave. Has anyone ever seen the Divergent series? I heard sort of things about it. Uh, Rings, the reboot of the Ring film. Uh, I like the original, the original Japanese version instead of the American version. <laughs> Laughing emojis. Was it the Divergent Insurgent? 
because it kind of rhymes. That's what they should have just called it. I I didn't like the American version of Rings. I like the the Japanese 1998 version because Japanese people scare the shit out of me. So <laughs> uh, the Japanese version, which is called Ring You, uh, based on the Japanese novel, I. I like the original. The I like the original ninety eight Japanese version. I think it's creepy and disturbing. The American version is more on shock. That's the thing that kind of bugs me about uh, horror films today. Is about it has to be a shock, terror. And it can't be like if you look at The Conjuring. It was such a refreshing horror movie because it wasn't about shock and terror it was all you know build up to like the thing that terrifies terrifies you and stuff so um rings yeah transformers last night i have not seen the transformer films i i heard so many things about it i have never seen it so he wrote dark tower no wonder that movie sucked That was a terrible fucking movie. And I, I don't know how they ruined it. I mean, besides Stephen King's crazy mind. But, uh, that was a terrible movie. <laughs> uh, let's see. And he also was a producer of the Paranormal Activity films. That kind of explains it. And he's producing Dr. Sleep. Doctor Sleep. I, I'm not gonna see it. I know I talked about Doctor Sleep, the sequel to The Shining, and I know a lot of people. Um, I'm one of those people that's kind of like asking if it's going to be a sequel to. The Stanley Kubrick version, which Stanley Kubrick is a legend. He's, I think, one of the most brilliant filmmakers that have ever made films. And he he made films that, if, if you really want to kind of know who I am as a person, I'm going to name off some of the films and I recommend you watching them if you kind of want to know what kind of person I am (laughs) as an individual so I I'm going to name them off for you so he did films such as The Shining Uh, he did The Shining Eyes Wide Shut Dr. Strangelove, which is a classic film, by the way. 2001, A Space Odyssey. Clockwork Orange. So, those are kind of the films that you kind of... I, I recommend checking out. So... Eyes Wide Shut is like the most... Terif- it's not a terrifying film, it's like one of those... Complete psychological mysteries. It's kind of like you look at everything around around you now in the world, and it's kind of like weird and disturbing. So <laughs> it's a it's one of those films that if you kind of like take a step back and you look at it, you're like, and you look at a lot of the things that happen, like. You look at um, the Bohemian Grove thing. You look at um, a lot of the symbolism that they put in the stuff like music videos or TV 
I know. 